In the premiere episode, Connor said that they were 10 days out from the election, and the first five episodes took place over the course of five consecutive days. So that would have placed the election as either the finale or the day after the finale. But this episode took place over the course of two days, so it seems more and more likely that we'll actually see the election this season. Will we see the results? Maybe not. So let's start by focusing on the main plot, the deal. Kendall and Roman called a meeting and attempted to plant seeds of doubt about Matson, but it didn't work as they had hoped. The insiders weren't phased by their concerns about him. Moreover, Shiv saw right through them since she had had a secret meeting with Matson, and he had told her that the boys had acted unprofessionally on top of the mountain. What? I fucking know you. What? What? Yeah, what? 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 Kendall and Roman came up with a new strategy. Matson had offered 192, which most considered a big win for Kendall and Roman. But the word is that Matson will have trouble getting his insiders to agree to more than 192. So their goal was to ask for more money and thus tank the deal. The first step to achieving that was by hitting a home run with their new product launch, and they did. Well, Kendall did. Since Matson and Shiv have formed a working relationship, Matson tried to get Shiv to cancel the product launch since he doesn't like the idea and doesn't want to have to spend time and resources unwinding it. Shiv laid seeds of doubt about Ken to Roman, causing Roman to suggest that they either cancel or postpone the product launch. But that didn't work, so Roman opted to sit out instead, expecting Kendall to go down in flames, and he almost did. It started out rough, but Kendall hit his stride and he knocked it out of the park. Hi. I don't like it. Yeah. Can you stop it? Oh, what, you don't want to make prison camps for granny? Uh Matson threw a Hail Mary during Kendall's presentation by sending out a very inappropriate tweet comparing the Living Plus homes to concentration camps. But Kendall's response put out that fire as well. In fact, Matson even deleted the tweet, so it was a big episode for Kendall. He's not entirely in the clear, though. Kendall coerced Peter into fudging the projections numbers, and Carl threatened Kendall from making any bogus claims since it would reflect poorly on him as CFO. But Greg somehow convinced the editing guy to make it seem as if Logan himself had gone on record as saying that Living Plus would double the earnings of the Parks Division. Significant boost to the earnings of our Parks Division. We want to say double the earnings instead of a significant boost. I'm convinced that the Living Plus real estate brand can bring the cruise ship experience to dry land and double the earnings of our Parks Division. Since Kendall's presentation was so good, even Coral began praising Kendall as special. But here's the thing, their numbers or a lie. In the next episode, Kendall will probably tell Matson that 192 is no longer good enough. So, the big question is, will Matson and his team of tech-savvy people realize that Logan's words were a lie? If so, then 192 would be back on the table. It was a tough episode for Roman. When Shiv called out him and Kendall, Kendall admitted the truth to her, that they were trying to tank the deal. Roman pointed out that Matson had said bad things about their father, but that didn't hit her the way it had hit him. Roman is still very depressed about the loss of his father, and the new product of Living Plus only served to remind Rome of his father's death, and he went wild. Joy raised some concerns to Roman, such as Etienne's favorable coverage of Jared Menken, and then she hit him where it hurts worst by saying this. I'm sure you are where you are for a very good reason. So, he fired her, and he didn't tell Kendall, at least not right away. When Jerry found out, she pulled Roman aside to explain why firing Joy would be a very bad idea. This is something that dad would have done and oh, you know Oh, well, it. maybe, but you're not your dad. So he fired her, too. I had assumed that Kendall was going to be furious about those moves because he was trying to strengthen the company's position so that they could ask Matson for higher than 192. But firing Joy and Jerry would most likely weaken their company, especially in the eyes of Matson, since he wanted to keep Jerry. But surprisingly, Kendall was fine with it. So, Roman made some mistakes, but they didn't backfire, at least not with Kendall. Kendall was still pumped to do a presentation with Rome as co-captains, but Roman backed out and Kendall smashed it. So Kendall received all the credit. In the beginning of the episode, Kendall was happy to watch his father mock him over and over. At the end of the episode, Kendall sent Rome a seemingly edited clip of Logan Mock and Roman. I'm convinced that a Roman Roy has a micro dick and always gets it wrong. At first, Roman laughed just like Kendall had, but 
He kept listening to it over and over, and it reinforced his insecurities. Although Kendall seemed like the big winner, Shiv also scored some points this episode. She refused to get up to go see Matson, so he walked over to her, which proved to her that she has leverage over him. Although she didn't bite right away, Kendall barged into the room and took her seat, so she eventually went on the attack. As we mentioned earlier, she convinced Rome that Kendall might embarrass them during the presentation, and it almost worked. Kendall was very sad that Rome didn't believe in their vision. That is why his presentation started out shaky. Ultimately, Kendall got it done with the help of Greg, so Kendall chalked up a win, but it came at a cost. Shiv saw Roman walk out of the celebration for Kendall, so she knows that there is a fracture there that she can exploit in the upcoming episodes. Shiv and Tom also made some moves. In the last episode, Tom stuck up for himself when she mocked him, and in this episode, he won the biting game. He also explained his betrayal as a means of protecting his career over his love, and that is the type of thing that Shiv finds hot. So they flirted with each other, and they hopped on the good foot and did the bad thing. Once again, I am torn more than ever. I just want Tom to be happy. He wants Shiv, so I want that for him, but is she right for him? I don't know. There may have been some truth as to the reason why he betrayed her, but Tom's apology to her seemed real. He seems to love her unconditionally, and I'm not sure the same could be said about her feelings towards him. If she was poor, would he still love her? Probably. But if he was poor, would she still love him? There was a point where I thought that she was finally going to tell him that she was pregnant, but she didn't. So it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. In the upcoming episodes, Tom is going to host an election party, so it is only a matter of time before Nate re-enters the picture. Kendall was the big winner of the episode, and he knew it. That's why he went out to the ocean and celebrated. Kendall has a long history with water. In the season one finale, he tried to swim down several times, but he was unable to rescue the server. Kendall locked himself in a bathroom in an empty tub. In season three, Kendall nearly drowned in a pool. By going out into the ocean and floating in peace, Kendall was proving to himself that things had improved, but as we went over earlier, Kendall's strategy is based off of fake numbers, and those fake numbers are backed by a fake edit of Logan. Although the edit was great and it tricked the audience, Matson is a tech guy, so he might figure it out, and he also has an ally who knows the truth. Well, you keep me looped. Mm-hmm. My girl on the inside. Oh, fuck you, my boy on the outside. That's not fucking cool. Um, well, it's really well edited. Since Roman bowed out, the blame lies with just one of the co-CEOs, so Kendall's big win might have just been the rise before the fall. And if he falls, what does he have left? Kendall's father died four days ago, and Kendall has not spoken to or about his children even once. Logan was a mean and abusive grandfather, so the kids might be okay, but they might not be, and it doesn't seem like Kendall cares at all. So it raises the question, how much longer will Kendall take his own children for granted. He had a pretty rough, different generation. 